Hello, I'm Phoebe Legere and welcome to Roulette TV. Tonight our guest is composer Pauline Oliveros. Ms. Oliveros is one of the most important composers of the 21st century. She's also an amazing accordionist, a brilliant theorist, and an inspired improviser. In 1981, Oliveros left the University of California at San Diego at the rank of full professor to support her creative projects and collaborations. In 1985, Oliveros was honored by a retrospective of her music at the JFK Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. Her recorded works are available on 17 CDs. Roulette TV is honored to present a living treasure, innovator, truth teller, pioneer, visionary, composer, Pauline Oliveros.
Hello, Pauline. Hi, Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beautiful performance. Oh, I loved it. Were you improvising? Well, when you when you ask me that question, uh, I you know always wonder what does she, what does she mean when she <laughs> asks me if I'm improvising? <laughs> I could be I could be a little bit um, mischievous about that. Go ahead. But um, uh, I'm I'm making the piece in in the moment, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it through the, my practice of, of uh, listening. Which, which I call deep listening. Yeah. So I'm, I'm um, taking in everything that I can possibly hear um, and listen to yeah. and making the music from that basis. Can you tell us uh, what you mean when you say that you're listening to people listening? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> um, I think probably everyone can uh, has some sense of of when they've been heard. Um, uh, some of the most important moments in anyone's life is when uh, another uh, in a relationship of some sort, uh, the other person has heard you and listened to you. So you are at that moment listening to their listening. Can you tell us what is quantum listening? Quantum listening. Well, um, you know, I'm a science appreciator. <laughs> Me too. And uh, uh, I've, I've loved uh, reading about uh, qu quantum mechanics and, and uh, uh, theoretical physics. And, and I worked with a theoretical physicist for um, some years doing, we did research together and also um, this uh, Lester Ingber, he was also a uh, uh, karate master and I studied karate with him and he taught it on the basis of physics, so that I learned quite a lot about physics through, uh, through that body discipline. Um, and so that, you know, I, I have just over the years uh, read a lot of different things. I, I started to read David Bohm and uh, uh, The Implicate Order and then uh, uh, other, other things. And uh, I, I see, saw that the quantum the world of quantum or uh, uh, um, particles and uh, the way they behave was much more uh, in line with the way I made my music <laughs> because of the of the changing states, the processes that are that uh, take place, and and because it, the universe seems to be improvising. <laughs> Um, but when and why did you turn away from staff-based notation and start doing these other kinds of scores? Yeah, well, I think it was it was it was a process, uh, which uh, began uh, as I started to uh, improvise, uh, and also as I started to to uh, work with tape, you know, with recording. Um, it was quite clear that uh, making a recording uh, recorded whatever it was that you were doing, so you didn't have to make a notation from that. Um, <clears throat> when I started making electronic music, I was working more like a sound sculptor. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, it, it, I was working with long, long stretches of sound, and I, there was no way to notate it because uh, I was. Uh, working with electronic music like I worked tonight with my accordion. And that was through this listening uh, practice. That, and that listening practice derived from uh, a, the, the gift of a tape recorder that my mother uh, gave me for my birthday in 1953. Um, and I began to record environments uh, right away, I would put the microphone in my window and just record whatever was going on and listen as I was recording. And then I discovered that I didn't hear everything that, that the microphone heard, so I realized that I had to listen better than that. So I gave myself the practice from that point. From so, that point? Yeah, from that point. That was a very conscious um, uh, uh, thing that I did, task 
that I gave myself, which was is, turns out is a is a meditation, or a practice, however you want to want to say it. But I've been doing that now for 47 years. So when you do something for that long, you you know you you learn from it, <laughs> and it's still a very uh, uh, important practice for me. I wondered if you could give our TV viewers a deep listening assignment for them right now. Oh, okay. Well, um, can, you know, whatever is going on uh, in your place is part of what you're, uh, is part of what you're, you're learning right now. <laughs> so you can ask yourself, what am I learning? What, what intelligence can I get, am I getting from the sounds that I'm hearing? Because every sound is, is, is an intelligence. It's alive, it's happening. Uh, so if you're listening in that way, uh, things begin to change. So uh, you could say, well, um, out of all the sound that I hear uh, every day, what sound makes me feel creative? And when that sound comes, well, then follow it.